Hi, everybody out there in podcast land. Welcome back to another fine episode of Film Knobs. I am your co-host, Barry B-Man Benning. And in front of me, we have... I'm Richard the Morganator Morgan. And um, so, Richard the Morganator Morgan, where... What, what were we talking about last week? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. So, we're, we're going... This is going to be part two of... The action heroes. The action heroes. We, <laughs> the, the the male division. The male division. Right. It went on a little longer than we thought last uh, last week's episode, so we had to break it up a little bit. Right. Because um, any good action series deserves a, a sequel. Absolutely. And you know, I guess if we played our card right, you know, we we should have three of these. Right. We we'll make a trilogy. But, we could. We could. Yeah. It, well, we could. I guess we. Well, I think that we should probably be able to. To power through uh, on this episode, though, and, and get get through to the end. I say that now, but <laughs> I don't know. So, but before we do that, um, uh, is there anything out there that's got your attention? Have you seen any movies lately, or is there, yeah, like I say, is there some kind of uh, movie news that there's a big movie coming up? Uh, what could that be? Um, I don't know, but I've been dodging the trailers for it oh lord yeah well good luck good <laughs> luck dodging it. i'm just gonna leave I th- the tv I think it's called off avengers endgame avengers endgame i've heard something about that kind of big kind of long i just looked at the running time three three hours and one minute long man oh day makes you wonder how much additional footage is going to be on the blue <laughs> when it comes out <laughs> it could make a massive <laughs> Massive. The, the, the large of a four Arabia. hour, the right. four hour director's cut. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it, you know how I really kind of rail against movies these days that are over long. I think that's, I think that's an, a pro- problem endemic in the <laughs> in the industry, as they say right now. <laughs> There's just too many movies are too long. But I can kind of see without having seen this movie yet, I can see where this movie would be that long i mean they've got a lot to got a lot to wrap up in this movie well you said earlier you saw glass i did see glass now was glass longer than it should have been or was it just structurally not what it should have been yes (laughs) (laughs) yes to both it uh it was a mess it was um you know, most comic books, one thing about them is, is there's not a lot of talk in them. Usually, you know, hey, let's get right to the action. I This movie was so talky. I was, by the end of it, I was ready. You know, I was ready for it to, to end. And it was so disappointing because the previous movies to this story, uh, Unbreakable and Split, uh, were both solid movies. But this this movie just kept on going, just Everybody blathering on is a shame because all three actors, three lead actors, were extremely good. McAvoy in particular. Um, but man, all right. So, what was the running time on Endgame that you said? What I saw on IMDb was three hours and one minute. Now, you know, of course, I guess about ten minutes of that will be credits. Uh, just like all of these movies, you know, you can count a good ten minutes, especially on special effects laden movies like this. Because the running time on, on an Infinity War was two forty. No, yeah. well, it's just just twenty, <laughs> just twenty more minutes. <laughs> but um, so did, does that mean the big fight scene? They're gonna have a big fight scene at the end, right? Oh well, I hope so. <laughs> like, if they don't, I'm gonna be really disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, well, let's hope that they, yeah, let's hope that they get down to business and there's some action and not a lot of talking like in glass. Lord. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't count this movie. This didn't happen. <laughs> Wiped from the, it's all, it's great to have this much power, you know? I've just completely thrown that movie out. It just <laughs> doesn't exist in my mind anymore. <laughs> Maybe I'm Thanos. <laughs> just, right, that's, wow. Oh. I could if it would probably be more than fifty percent though, uh, you know, if if I had the power to just eliminate <laughs> the population. The, no, no movies. Oh, <laughs> the population of movies. Uh, you know, I don't know. I might get rid of a good 
That could be a podcast in and of itself, couldn't it? Hmm, it could be, yeah. Movies that should not exist. <laughs> Movies that should not <laughs> exist, right. And we just will them out of existence. <laughs> they just disappear, poof. Maybe some of the, the studios you know, that have lost money will thank us. But- <laughs> For those movies not existing, so right. they will, well, they will have lost. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to, you know, because we, just because we banished these movies, I, I don't think that, I, I, I don't think their money will magically come back from mm. that, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, so, um, where did we leave off last week? Okay, so 1988, Die Hard. Okay. One of my all-time favorite movies. See, now this, I believe Die Hard is probably the most important movie on this list, on this entire, the most important action movie as far as what we think of as an action movie now. This is a pure action flick done wonderfully. John McTiernan, uh, McTiernan had a run of a few movies, you know, in a row. Uh, this and The Hunt for Red October, Predator, uh, where he was, you know, uh, the best action director out there. But we're talking about action stars, right? And right. Uh, so who's the who's the bald headed guy? Uh, was, uh, Bruce somebody. Bruce, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Yes, yes. Right. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, you remember after Die Hard came out in 88, it was every action movie it seemed like made after that, it was the template had been had been made and it was going to be Die Hard on a right, or in a right, right behind it, whatever. Put your preposition in there and then Die Hard behind it and that's I mean, Die Hard basically redefined the action genre like Star Wars redefined the sci-fi genre. Agreed. Agreed totally. This was, you know, Game changer is a term thrown around a lot, uh, but in this case, it's definitely deserved. Uh, and again, I think it's the best pure, I think this is the best pure action film ever made. And uh, to make a few people upset, I didn't like any of those. Ones that <laughs> I haven't liked any. Uh, but okay, look, I, no, all right. Die Hard 2, I can take. But it's just a re, yeah. It's just, I know they're all rehash. It's just a better made. Re- it's not as dumb as the uh, as the other ones <laughs> that follow. <laughs> um, and then so Bruce, who also may deserve, we're running out of room on Mount Rushmore, action Mount Rushmore. Bruce probably deserves a spot up there as well. I agree. So what else? John McClane, uh, the character in all the Die Hard movies. And so how, he was able to springboard the popularity of Die Hard um, into what else? What are the other big movies that we've got on this list? The Fifth Element uh, from 1997. One of my all-time favorites, too. That's a good, that's certainly, uh, you got to love the look of that movie, too. Mm-hmm. Luke Besson, uh that's right. And one of the women from our previous week's uh, um heroin episode is in that film as well. Mm-hmm. So that, that that's an important movie then. What else? I see the Jackal, which I didn't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Something about seeing Bruce Willis as a bad guy just didn't quite float in that movie. Well, yeah, it's just, uh, it's watch the original. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, here's another movie. Oh Lord. I'll let you, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about this guy anymore, but you can mention it. Armageddon. <laughs> and, and that comes in at a a pretty high number 36. That was a huge movie. Mm-hmm. Huge, huge movie. And, t- you know, you talk about movie or things that have been parodied quite a bit over the years, I guess. That one that one has its fair share. What else we got? Well, I see um, I see the a couple of the Die Hard sequels. Mm-hmm. We got Sin City, 2005. That was interesting. That was an interesting movie. And uh, I see Red, both the Reds are up there. Those are fun movies. They are fun movies. And those are movies done right when, you know, I, I mentioned earlier about actors getting long in the tooth mm-hmm. to do certain roles. 
but if you you know if if you write the right screenplay around them, then it can work, and it certainly works. And I think in the case of both movies, I I enjoyed both movies. And then Helen Mirren's character is just hysterical in those movies. Yeah. Well, she's just great. She and is Helen great. Mirren, uh, ageless it seems like. Okay, so nineteen ninety, Lionheart. Lionheart. With Jean Claude Van Damme. Well, I did expect to see Jean Claude make this list. I didn't think it was going to be with. I didn't think Lionheart would be on here though. Uh, I, I figured. Hard Target would be on, maybe. It is. Hard, so, Hard Target. Yep, there, there it is. I see it. And um, Oh, you yeah, know, it's funny. So you mentioned the muscles from Brussels. Mm-hmm. John claude that's, that's his nickname. He didn't do very many critically acclaimed films, let's say. Uh, but, but there's a movie not on this list. I see Lionheart, Hard Target, and Time Cop, movie I did like, mm-hmm. by the way. That's a pretty solid little sci-fi movie. But uh, I always think of the movie Bloodsport when I think of Jean Claude Van Damme, and I don't know if it was because it was you know it was very popular on on rental in rentals and um, and on uh, like pay per view like HBO and, and things like that. I remember several people telling me, "Oh, you got to check out check out this guy," you know, uh, in Bloodsport, and, and that's what I remember Van Damme more for for anything. Now, from what I could tell, Bloodsport didn't get a global release; it just had a domestic release. So, that... yeah, and it's probably pretty. You know, I I, I don't know that it did uh, that well here in that you know in its domestic release, but uh, I know that it found life. You know, it did find life after, uh, and, and so did he. <laughs> Obviously, oh, <laughs> so did Jean Claude, and he's you know at least Jean. Uh, so he he's gotten older; he can't really be convincing as an action hero lead anymore but he has at, at least got a good sense of humor about himself what is what are the commercials on the that? tostitos tostito <laughs> i find those kind of humorous and they did a, he did a movie a few years ago critics love that i didn't see uh, where he kind of parodied himself in uh uh jvcd right yeah uh which was he he more or less played himself i think but uh, i think he also had a role in one of the expendable movies oh yep um, well it seems like this would uh, well there's so many in that i guess that's not gonna necessarily <laughs> pop up automatically but um yeah the muscles from brussels so tom cop clocks in at uh 136 on the list uh well, that's a little maybe a little higher i knew that it I think critically, that movie again did okay, especially when you compare that to some of his other other movies. Um, as a matter of fact, while you're zooming back, I'm gonna check out Time Cop here. It gets a well, it gets a 48 Metascore, which is probably pretty high uh, for Jean. Hey, wait a minute, there's another movie we haven't talked about. Wasn't he in um, what about Universal Soldier? And that's another movie that I think may have at the time didn't may not have done that well, but I know a lot of people that love Universal Soldier. Critics, no, it's a thirty-five meta score, but um, you know because uh, Universal Soldier directed by another one of my favorite directors of all time, Roland Emmerich. Mm. And I'm saying that in tongue in cheek, ladies and gentlemen, in case you can't. <laughs> In case you can't tell, but uh, it also uh, also had Dolph Lundgren in it. Mm-hmm. Universal. Have you ever seen? Have you seen? Your, oh yeah, yeah. So what did you? Uh, you you're not saying much about. It, you're just nodding your head. It was a fun movie at the time. You know. <laughs> you bet you've gotten over it. Yeah. But both of those guys have found uh, found their way into the Expendables. <laughs> well, and Dolph made it back into the Rocky movies too. Oh, that's right. Or Creed with Creed. Well, yeah. And remember uh, my review last year of it? I thought that was actually one of the, that he was one of the brighter points too. Well, he, sh- he should be a bright point. He's what? He's a rocket scientist in real life too. He's got a degree in rocket science. <laughs> so he should be a bright spot. And he was in last year's Aquaman. Yeah, it has been a little bit of a nice call. Yeah. A resurgence, a little, uh, a little Lundgren resurgence here. 
So what have we got uh, after Jean Claude? Who's who's the next action here? And I, look, Dolph Lundgren. We again, we have to mention him. He's not probably going to headline any of the movies we talk about, but um, he's been a lot of action flicks. <laughs> Didn't he play He Man? Yes, he did. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is correct. It's probably I don't know that may be his biggest starring role that I could. And he also played in a movie I like. Wow, we're going to, let's go for a deep dive here. I think he played the lead in a science fiction movie that I thought was pretty good called I Come in Peace. Do you remember that? I don't. Yeah, well, it, it yeah, it wasn't a big movie, but uh, it's one of those guilty pleasure. Jean, uh, Dolph pops up in some guilty pleasures every now and then. Check out I Come in Peace if you get a chance. I'll have to. Okay, so our next movie on our, on our list, how about Point Break, 1991? Oh, man. Yeah. All right. Well, about this movie, I know I've made fun. I've, I've made fun <laughs> of some other movies that I'm right, you know, I might take a little heat on, right? But I'll, I'll, I feel like, I, look. Point Break, not my all-time favorite either, but I may lay off a little bit. I know some people that just, a lot of people really like Point Break. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take it easy on them. And it's not a bad movie. It's, it's it's definitely got some pretty cool scenes. And who else? So the reason you mentioned Point Break is, who's our... Um, so you got Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves. So, all right, we haven't mentioned Patrick Swayze yet. He was... Um, and another pretty good action movie that I don't know why it's not on here because I'm pretty sh- well. It maybe it just didn't make the movie I th- or the money I, I thought it did. But uh, Roadhouse is another well beloved action flick. I mean, just fist fights galore, a couple of great barroom fight scenes. As far as Swayze is concerned, mm-hmm. um, yeah, he did Next of Kin, which wasn't quite as successful as. It's Roadhouse, but Roadhouse is a, a really fun, guilty pleasure. Point Break. Uh, who else? Uh, I guess uh, there's another guy in there that's deserving of some mention. Mr. Keanu Reeves. Mr. Keanu Reeves, who has made his way into numerous. Now, <clears throat> Swayze kind of a multi-talented guy. You know, a lot of his popular movies he was actually you know dramatic lead or you know um a musical you know, kind of music i guess what dirty dancing right right movies like that mm-hmm. but not action movies keanu uh followed point break up with speed another fairly popular <laughs> another fairly popular action movie that is really fun if you don't think about it for more than two seconds well speed comes in at 50 on the list yeah is that going to be hit? No, that's what I want to talk about. That's not his highest uh, movie because he also plays Neo, the iconic Neo in the Matrix uh, trilogy, mm-hmm. of which that first movie was great. <laughs> that first movie is awesome. <laughs> I don't know about the other. I can't even, i got to be honest. I didn't even see the third one. I was so unhappy with the second one. I was actually, I had to stifle my laughter in a couple of parts in, in the second one in the theater. I was like, ah. So they don't count. It's kind of like, you know, we talk, m- movies after Aliens don't count, right? Uh, movies after uh, Die Hard don't really count. <laughs> and movies after The Matrix eh, don't really count either. Now we got The Matrix on Blu-ray, oh, the, the whole trilogy. Well, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> hope you enjoyed the second two more. Well, you certainly enjoyed the third one more than I did because I didn't bother. I know it's terrible. I need to go back and watch that. What's funny is the Matrix Reloaded comes in at number nineteen. Yeah, on, I'm on looking at that. I I didn't realize that it made. You know, uh, let's see. What about unadjusted profit from? Or let's go with. Let's go with uh, lifetime gross worldwide. So the Matrix is what four sixty three, right? Revolutions at four twenty seven, and then reloaded at seven forty two. That's a huge. That's a big difference. Right? 
because and that's only four years difference between those movies. Well, Reloaded was the second one. Revolutions was the third one. So it, it had you. You weren't alone apparently in the uh, not viewing of the third one. I, I wish everyone could see my uh, your victory dance, my victory dance <laughs> that I just did. I'm so <laughs> happy. Uh, I feel like <laughs> I feel like I've been vindicated. <laughs> Right. Well, so the movies were released. Those two were released within a year of each right. other. And yeah, that is a massive draw. So it's almost half the public. The public did feel like they didn't care to see how it ended as well. Who are we kidding? Four hundred and four hundred twenty-seven million dollars is nothing to sneeze. True. So. True. Uh, and then, uh, so, and that's not it for Ke- You look at Keanu, and sometimes I think the first thing I think of is Bill and Ted, right? Mm-hmm. And you look at him, he's kind of, I mean, he's hes certainly in shape and everything, but it's not, I don't think action hero for some reason, you know, when I immediately see Keanu Reeves. But hes he's been in a lot of huge action movies because he's John Wick as well. True. Which John Wick three is coming out this year? Should be out, yeah. What uh, within a couple of weeks, I guess, two or three weeks. I'll have to say I'm looking forward to that. I do. I'm really those movies. Again, as long as you don't think about them, <laughs> uh, provide all the entertainment that you want, action wise. Well, that's what you want when you go to an exactly, action movie. and that and those movies now are wall to wall action. Speaking of wall-to-wall action, how about uh, Under Siege from 1992? Well, that was wall-to-wall action. That's a pretty good... And, you know, we talked earlier about Die Hard. This is Die Hard on a boat, right? Basically, right. on a ship starring the ever-talented thespian, Steven Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> and, and look, as much as I, you know, you know I make sport of Steven from time to time. Steven Seagal. Um he deserves to be on our list. I mean, he was a, um, if not the biggest action, he was a pretty big action star mm-hmm. in the, uh, I guess, what, late 80s, early 90s. Mm-hmm. And this this was his biggest hit. And, and this was his best movie as well. And look, I, you know what? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make a guilty pleasure admission here. Um, Under Siege 2, Dark Territory, I, I enjoyed that movie. <laughs> so you know i talk smack about all these you know movies i think ah dumb steve whatever i was entertained by at the time the true film knob confessional yeah <laughs> that needs to be that needs we <laughs> think we need a guilty pleasure episode so under siege comes at number 95 on the list um yeah and i'm trying to think other than uh well, he was in, he was, he was in, uh, what was the Kurt Russell uh, movie uh, as well? Executive the, Decision. Executive Decision. I remember him being in that. And <laughs> I guess I won't say much about that, that character or that part, but uh, that wasn't a bad action movie. Okay, so moving on to 1993, how about In the Line of Fire? Uh, yeah, that was a an excellent movie. I love that movie. Wolfgang Peterson movie. Starring um, a guy, it seems um, kind of odd that we haven't mentioned yet. I don't think we've mentioned him yet. But he certainly uh, belongs upon this Mount Rushmore that we've built. Mm -hmm. Um, Clint Eastwood. Eastwood, um, such an iconic character. He's another guy. Iconic characters, not just one. Uh, His first iconic character from uh, the we- the Spaghetti Western, Sergio Leone's um, uh, Spaghetti Western trilogy. Um, the man, uh, played the man with no name. Then uh, he shows up again, uh, c- kind of in one of those uh, genre redefining movies, um, uh, playing Dirty, uh, Dirty Harry, Sergeant uh, Harry Callahan, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in the you know, Dirty Harry, which came out in 71, I think. And that we we talked about Maverick Cop movies, you know, guys that have to break the rules to get the 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 villains in jail or dead, where whatever needs to be. Um, 
Steve McQueen and Bullet was, you know, kind of the first one of that ilk that I remember, you know, as far, far as modern movies. But then Dirty Harry was certainly uh, the biggest. So, was Dirty Harry the originator of having a catchphrase? It's the one that I, you know, I wouldn't say, no, he's not the originator of a, well, I don't know, a catchphrase. We, we've got memorable lines, I guess, versus catchphrases. <laughs> uh I think of how we think of yeah of certain characters using catchphrases. That's that's the first one that pops into my <laughs> mind. So the reason we didn't mention Dirty Harry earlier is because this list only covers movies with a global theatrical release. Nice. Nah, yeah. So had we put Dirty Harry on the list with just a domestic uh, gross, and then subtracted the budget, and then adjusted it for inflation, it would have come in at number one hundred and twenty on, on our list. So it's still, yeah, it would have it would have made the list. It would have made the list had it had it had all the criteria. Right. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's good to know. That's good to know because yeah, Dirty Harry. That's a that's a biggie. And so, so that would explain some of the other absentees, maybe that we've right maybe that we, not specifically covered, such as Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. I was about to say now. You know, whenever you talk about whatever you think of Chuck Norris's thespian skills or lack thereof, Chuck Norris is definitely a big player in the action movie genre starting from, I guess, starting in the mid to late 70s, right? Um, first time I remember Chuck, he was the best to me, the best thing still Chuck was Chuck was in was when he and uh, Bruce Lee went toe to toe at the end of. Um, Oh, good lands. I can't remember which movie that was. Revenge of the Dragon, maybe? And then, you know, he started having some of his later 70s solo, like Good Guys Wear Black and The Octagon and, you know, those the, movies. The Delta Force movies. The Delta Force. That, that might have been. Those are certainly, I guess, some of the biggest money makers for, for Chuck. They all were. Most of them, well, they wouldn't have kept making them if they weren't, but they were They were profitable. Mm-hmm. For sure, they didn't cost much, and uh, uh, he found his he found his audience. But again, none of those movies had a global release, so that's why they weren't listed. We're, okay. So, is anybody else we need to? Oh uh, well, yeah, I recap? can. Yeah, I know. I mentioned the movie. I don't know if I mentioned his name, but um, Lee Marvin uh, was another actor who uh, was very convincing in action movies. Uh, and I guess rightfully so, because he was another one of those true war heroes. Mm. You know, he, um, I, I know he was shot. Uh, I think he got shot in the took us, uh, in one of the battles in, in world war two and, and got his purple heart. But, uh, he was in movies like, um, like dirty does and point, um, uh, or a uh, point blank. Um, a lot of Westerns, a lot of war movies, the big red one. So I definitely have to mention, you know, we talked about the black exploitation genre. I'm sure in in the heroin episode with Pam Greer and a, a couple of others, and we may have touched upon it in the last episode, but I don't think we mentioned any names. And there were certainly some some big ones. Uh, Fred Williamson, uh, uh, who was in um, <laughs> a lot of movies that I can't mention by name. <laughs> <laughs> they just i wouldn't feel comfortable i wouldn't feel comfortable naming those <laughs> movies uh if you want to dear listener i you know you can go um check out imdb uh, check out imdb and look at his filmography uh, <laughs> uh he and and jim brown uh i believe and they're by no jim brown certainly uh, uh an ex-footballer one of the greatest running backs of all time yeah, oh, heck, what am I talking about? Just speaking, he's always been in action. His, I want to say his first movie, certainly his first big movie, was starring uh, alongside Lee Marvin in The Dirty Dozen. Wow. How can I forget that? Yeah, I remember him running. There was a, a really crucial scene at the end of the movie where he's got to run for his life. <laughs> but... Uh, I'm pretty sure Fred Williamson may have been a football player as well. Um, so those guys uh, certainly bear mentioning. And and those guys certainly, even though the black exploitation genre died off in the mid-70s for the most part, they, um, they helped pave the way 
to some of the uh, the black actors uh, in the '80s that uh, kind of took over the mantle of of action heroes, uh, guys like Carl Weathers, Apollo Creed, Apollo Creed in the Rocky movies. He also uh, played a crucial role in uh, Schwarzenegger's Predator. Mm-hmm. He was Action Jackson. Uh, do you remember Action? You remember Action Jackson? I know the movie exists. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I've seen. I that. believe. Yeah, he had uh, he had uh, duel with uh, with arch nemesis Craig T. Nelson. Was coach. The back- <laughs> coach. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know. Uh, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but I think I'm going to have to go back and check that out. At the very least, it could uh, yeah, it should provide some kind of entertainment. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, guys like that in the 80s, uh, and, and then, you know, in the 90s, in a much bigger way, um, Will Smith, you know, in, enters the ranks uh, as one of the heavyweight uh, well, maybe not physically, and so you know, not not <laughs> doesn't look like a heavy. Or was it heavy back then? But uh, he certainly was one of the top action stars uh, of the '90s. And I guess what the first uh, the first you know, the first action movie that I can recall him being in of any import was Bad Boys, 1995. 1995 with. Uh, you know, it's not two guys you would expect initially. Let's say, you know, we didn't have the knowledge that we have of what came afterwards, at least with Will Smith. But you wouldn't think that Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, you know, would necessarily uh, headline in one of the biggest action <laughs> movies. of. I know they're, they made at least one. I can't remember how many sequels uh, uh, Bad Boys had. I think they're talking about a, a new yeah. one, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Although so they've talked about this it, this would be the third one. This would be the third one. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't. How do you have any idea how how serious those talks are now? Uh, let me check the numbers real quick. I uh, yeah, because I want to say that I've you know they've talked about it for a long time, and um, you know Will's Will's action cred maybe not quite as high. Certainly not as high as it was in the mid to late nineties. In the early thousands, and Martin Lawrence kind of definitely took a, a detour, a big detour since then as well. But um, yeah, Will Smith, rapper turned action star, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the Fresh Prince, right? Another, it's like, wait a minute, how did so they... according to the numbers, Bad Boys for Life is scheduled to come out in twenty twenty. Oh, there's a release date. So this thing is, yeah. I want, is that a... A January movie release. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tentatively. It may, uh, it may, uh, it right, may change. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, though. So we must be pretty far along. I'm going to have to read about that, definitely. If anybody out there, Knobsters, if you have... I, I really haven't checked that out. So maybe, um, maybe you guys can um, let us know a little bit about what's going on with that. So what else? So Will Smith went from Bad Boys uh, to I'm going to say the next movie was it Independence? Uh, it was Independence Day. The next, at least in terms of action movies, right? Yeah. So 1996 Independence Day, huge movie, um, grossed over 1.1 billion dollars. Why is that the adjust? Is is that the yes uh, inflated? The, yeah. In, in 2019 money. And that comes in at what? How, where does that uh, rank out on? Number seven. Uh, number seven, yeah. That's huge. That movie was super huge. And I want to say that, I don't know when Bad Boys was released as far as, I know what year, but certainly with Independence Day, if I'm not mistaken, like for the next two or three years, Will Smith's, you know, Will Smith movies action movies mm-hmm. opened around july the, he was the july the fourth right. independence the sum, day guy the summer release the summer it, blockbuster exactly yeah uh because what men in black was next the following year right mm-hmm. and i want to say that was released somewhere around july 4th um 
and then and I, this one didn't do quite as this one wasn't quite as big as the previous two. I'm talking about Independence Day and Men in Black, but then Enemy of the State mm -hmm. also uh, did well. Another big movie. And then, if memory serves me right, the next year. So, so for, we've got from 95 to 98, Bad Boys, Independence Day, Men in Black, Enemy of the State, and then came in 1999, Wild Wild West, to put all the, <laughs> to put that... A uh, nice little run to an end. No, I had a good music video. No, no, <laughs> I, I looked at it. No, I disagree with you firmly on that. That's probably one of the worst. I, I, I was going through, I thought, you know, a good idea for a show maybe coming up in the future would be worst theme songs. And I'm not kidding. You. <laughs> worst theme songs of all time, you know, to any movie. And I checked out, there's a couple of sites there that have their, you know, that have their choices and I certainly found Wild Wild West on, on several of the sites that I looked at. I'm going to have to agree, Rick. I'm sorry, buddy. That was a uh, yikes. <laughs> not, a, not a fan of the. Because no. you had one for MIB. How, yeah, and that was MIB too. Yeah, and and and, and those were well, certainly the 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 Men in Black uh, song was good. Uh, but that Wild Wild West. Have you? Here, here, hold on for just a second, Rick. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, Will. So, <laughs> so are you going? Are you going to defend? Are you going to defend uh, Will and Wild Wild West? I'll defend the song. Maybe not his performance in the movie, but I'll defend the song. I like the song. <laughs> oh, but needless to say, yeah, that was uh, the movie took a big bath. Uh, yeah, not I don't know anybody that that liked that movie, including his fans. And that was I'd have to look at his uh, filmography, but. It kind of started going downhill. I want to say after that, right? Do you do you recall? I can't remember. Uh, according to IMDb, his next movie was Le The Legend of Bagger Vance in two thousand. <laughs> the Leg The Legend of Bagger Vance was his name. Well, that certainly that movie didn't advance uh, <laughs> advance his career Ouch. any any further. Thank you, thank you for coming out. Thank <laughs> you for coming out. And then what? And then Ali, which uh, that movie was another it, it wasn't uh he i think he was nominated for best actor for that possibly but that was a bit of a if i remember correctly a bit of a financial uh disappointment mm. uh, I, I think people a lot of people had had thought that would be huge and it was not the men in black 2 came out in 2002 mm. bad boys 2 came out in 2003 mm. yeah <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was the beginning of a rough str and then i robot which i had I didn't care for. Um, did you see? Did you see? Uh, yeah, I was on the theater. What, what did you think of I Robot? Mixed. Yeah, Mixed. It's certainly a fair at best, I guess. Unmemorable. And then Hitch, which certain no action movie, but uh, <laughs> look, a lot of people kind of make sport of uh, Hitch. I'll, I guess is that a guilty pleasure? Can I say it's? I, I didn't mind yeah, it. Yeah, it is for me. Yeah, it, so you, you <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Good. All right, well, so, yeah, though, so for a brief run, well, several years, actually, Will Smith was the action, was the action guy of the summer, at least, right? Yeah, and he's, he's bounced back. I mean, Men in Black 3, 2012. <laughs> I don't know if that's bouncing back. Well, I'm just saying get Suicide Squad 2016, so. Yeah, you know, where, where it, he's, I mean, he's part of an ensemble uh, there. But, uh, but Bright, which I didn't, I didn't see, Bright, I have to be honest. Uh, I know that's a movie that the general public seemed to like more than, more than the critics from what I can tell so far. And it seems like he's going back into the, well, comedy. And spies in disguise and Aladdin. He's playing the genie. That'll be yeah. That's going to be 
coming up here in uh, what uh, a month or so. That's going to be and then Gemini Man. Is that the uh, that's the animated movie, right? Or is that no? That's that... like Looper. Oh, is it? So we're gonna okay. All right. So uh, so yeah, and Bad Boys for Life, right? Bright Two has been announced. So he is trying to slip back into that. Um, All right. So they're filming Bad Boys for Life, which would be Bad Boys Three, but it, it says it here that Bad Boys Four has been announced. announced. So I guess they're gonna do well. Let's see. Yeah, it'll all be dependent upon if if the general public wants bad boys for life or they don't want them anymore. So it, it could be a question, you know, is there too much time that's passed between bad boys for life and bad boys two? If it's kind of right. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, Will is is certainly not. Uh, what you would call, you know, in in what you normally think of as action prime, right? And the prime of your life for action movies. Although I think uh, a little bit later on here, we'll, we'll talk about a couple of actors, at least in my mind. I, I'm not for sure yet. They should be on the list, uh, I would think, uh, with actors who are a little bit older than you would seasoned. You, right <laughs> there, we go. That's a perfect season. <laughs> seasoned veteran actors who you wouldn't think, oh, well, this isn't the time for them to be, you know, action heroes, but... So, uh, who all, who we got coming up next time-wise here? How about Nicolas Cage? <laughs> how about, yeah, how about <laughs> Nicolas Cage? I, there's, a, there's an actor that's hard to, <laughs> to pin, pinpoint to pin down a seasoned vet, uh, no doubt. So what's the, what's the movie? Which movie is it? Um, is it face off or is it, um, uh, let's see the rock. The, oh, the rock came first. Came okay. first. All right. Well, my buddy, Michael Bay, my buddy, my pal, Michael Bay. Uh, yeah, well, this is a huge movie and, um, it comes at number 66 on the list. So, Wow, does it? 66? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah, Nicolas Cage, unfortunately now, his career's been an odd one. Now he's kind of a punching bag, I hate, hate to say. You know, a lot of, for a lot of a lot of people, he's become a, a bit of a joke career-wise, which is a shame. I mean, you know, like I say, at one point he was a big action star. Mm-hmm. And he is an Oscar-winning actor for best actor. He won Best Actor for Leaving Las Vegas, and when he's when he's good, he's very very good. And when he's not, <laughs> this is true. This is true. It's a chore, chore to sit through. So, all right, The Rock. Uh, he and someone else we've talked about on this list in the past, Mr. Sean Connery. Mr. Sean Connery, or should we say, Sir? Sir Sean. Yeah, we should. We should. He's he's earned that title. I would <laughs> say. Um. So what else? Uh, Con Air, right? In 97. In 97. That's another huge action movie. I mean, that... I was in another movie. <laughs> I wasn't really uh, terribly fond of, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it made a ton of my... Obvious. Where does that come in on our, our list? Or on your list, I should say. 106. 106. Pretty solid numbers-wise. John Malkovich is another villain. Uh, John Malkovich. He had a he had a lot of entry. Oh, Steve Buscemi was in it. Uh, who mm-hmm. else was in that movie? Uh, had a big cast. You had John Cusack. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was Danny Danny Trejo played a smaller. Part mm-hmm. of it. He was. Yeah. I know. I'm forgetting some some. Dave Chappelle had a bit part. Oh, and Dave Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say someone else you wouldn't no it wouldn't really attach to an action movie now, but uh and, and then I mentioned face off. What I'm I'm looking here now, I'm checking this out. All three of those movies came out within a year mm-hmm. of each other. Mm-hmm. That's big. I mean that's a within one year, three huge uh three huge action movies. Yeah, so he was in Gone when Gone in sixty seconds. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, Wind Talkers. 
Wind Talkers, another, well, that was a John Woo uh, war movie that I wanted to, oh man, I wanted to like that movie so much. That was a great story, but I had that on my worst of the year list (laughs) that year. I can remember that. National Treasure. Right, right. So, yeah, he's done several large-scale action movies and deserves to be on our list for those uh, for those movies. But he's a ghost writer, uh, mm-hmm. I see now, looking... Uh, it's definitely taken a turn for the, for the worse over the last few years. Maybe he can, you know... Maybe he can catch some of that magic back. He was in a movie that came out last year that... Certainly one of the more bizarre movies of last year. Excruciatingly violent. Uh, Mandy. I don't know if you saw Mm-mm. Mandy. Uh, a lot of... Uh, I know several critics really liked that. I know a few people who... Visually, that movie was was great. And he was... And he was fine. And it. it was just really tough to watch. It was so brutal. He's also done a lot of voice work. And he was the voice of Spider-Man Noir. In right, the, right. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, so that's right. He made it into one of the best movies of last year. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot all about it. Maybe that's a good start, right? I mean, you know, Mandy gets some good notices last year, and then he makes it into Spider Man and the Spider Verse. So this is a uh, um, yeah, maybe things. Oh, hey, and I see this now. Uh, Post he, color out of space. I believe that's a uh, uh, a Lovecraft uh, based on Lovecraft story. H.P. Lovecraft story, hmm. and I'm. I love me some H.P. Lovecraft, so, yeah. So you go from one comic book character, Ghost Rider, to another. How about Wesley Snipes as Blade? Oh, nice. Well <laughs> well done. From 1998. From 1998. Uh, I, remember, I remember liking Blade. Uh, well, I was really entertained with that movie. I didn't know much about the, the comic. Uh, I, I didn't care for the the other two movies but uh wesley wesley had a pretty good run for a little while now i don't know how many movies went you know super big but you know he had a run of uh, uh other than the blade what else there was um well i know previously before that was what uh he he had a he wasn't he wasn't the hero he wasn't an action hero but he was in an action movie with um Stallone. Right. Um, Demolition Man. Demolition Man, right. In 1993. So I guess now uh, several of the movies, uh, Blade wasn't exactly early in in Snipes. Uh, well, there were several movies, action movies he made prior to Blade, right? Right. You had... Um, so we got Passenger 57. Ah, yeah. I remember that was an, another that was a diehard type um, on a plane. <laughs> yeah, another diehard on a in a and Rising Sun with Sean Connery. Sean Connery, right, right. That was that was another one of those. A lot was expected out of that one, and it just it's the U.S. Marshals. U.S. Marshals. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was actually a, <clears throat> that was actually a decent sequel to Fugitive. I thought so. Um, so Wesley, Wesley took on a lot of bad guys there in the, the mid to late nineties mm-hmm. and, and, you know, vanquished them who he couldn't vanquish. If memory serves me right, was the IRS. Right. Correct? right. <laughs> I think, I think he lost that, that battle. If memory serves well, me. I'm not sure that anybody can win against the <laughs> IRS. <laughs> I think you might be, uh, I was going to say action heroes, but <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they should be on the action. Even yeah. even Al Capone could not right. beat the IRS. <laughs> oh, the IRS always wins. <laughs> who else have we? Uh, who else have we got on on the big list? So how about Antonio Banderas? Antonio, where, where does he come riding in? Is it going to be Zorro? Is the that- Mask of Zorro. The mass. I love that. I'll be honest. I remember going to the theater and really enjoying that movie. Nineteen ninety eight was a big year for action movies. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, what else came out in ninety eight? Blade. <laughs> Lethal Weapon four, Rush Hour, Saving Private Ryan, 
in Armageddon. Armageddon. Big year for Armageddon. It. <laughs> um, so Antonio, what? I know that was. I guess that was maybe his first big hit solo that he kind of took on. He was in previous before before um, Mask of Zorro over here in the states. He was in um, Interview with Vampire. Mm-hmm. And what he was, so he he was teamed up with. Um, as far as action movies go, he was teamed up with Stallone, right? In Assassins in '95. And Assassins and Desperado came out in '95 too. Really? So so I get and both of those. Well, I don't know about Assassins, Desperado. I really can't remember how those movies, how well those movies did financially, but. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, he definitely had a he had definitely had a few uh, a few action movie moments over here. Um, what else uh, in, in that uh, the failed uh, oh, the John McTiernan movie uh, that I never saw, uh, the Thirteenth Warrior, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, what else? Spy Kids movies. Spy Kids movies. Those were those were pretty good sized hits, or at least the first one was. I know. Uh, oh, he was in that terrible Brian De Palma movie, uh, Femme Fatale. Uh, I don't remember. You don't remember? Well, don't don't <laughs> don't bother with it. Uh, another one of those that made my worst of list that year. Let's see if I can pronounce this one: Ballistic X versus Sever. <laughs> right. That movie, <clears throat> I think, may have made about. Nine dollars and fourteen cents <laughs> at the box office. It had Lucy Lou in it. Come I on, I know. I love me some Lucy Lou, uh, but that movie. Well, look, the title not exactly help him. I what know. What is that? Ballistic X versus Sever. I want to say that somewhere I read, you know, someone was doing a worst titles of all time list, and that that movie <laughs> was in there and high up on. On the list, somewhere. had the dubious honor. The, well, it, I don't know if it was the worst, but it was. Um, yeah, it was. It ranked. Let's put it that way. Wow. And of course, he was in the Shrek movies, uh, Puss in Boots. You know, the little feline <laughs> swashbuckler. Right. <laughs> well, that's the, gosh, the kind of action movie to be in, right? <laughs> where you where you just let your animated character right, right. do all the, the all these. Which it makes you wonder if if in the sound booth he was actually doing the. Zora moves, you know. Do you think? Do you so? You think he might have been method acting? Uh, Maybe to, the, to get into <laughs> right, the right. Well, you know, all the great ones do, right? They say they just to get into character. So if there's footage out there of him in the sound booth doing that, I want to see it. If I do too. I would love to. I would love to check that out. Okay, so for our next action hero star, all we right. go from one country right. out of the Americas to another country. How about uh, Hong Kong? So, Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. All the way from Hong Kong. All the way from Hong Kong. And uh, look, they know, in Hong Kong, they know how to make, or they certainly at one point knew how to make some action movies. Make some pretty good pretty good action movies come out of uh, Hong Kong. And Jackie Chan, certainly, I guess, the actor you think of. Um, certainly the one that I think of. Hmm. Uh, from that area, um, I know Jackie. Jackie. Oh wait, but what, what movie? By the way, uh, it's got is it, is it Rush Hour? Rush that, Hour. Rush Hour. Okay. Which ranks at number eighty three on the list? Uh, Rush Hour. That was a. I remember he and uh, I actually. It must have been a good movie because I could. I could take Chris Tucker without <laughs> wincing, you know, every once every minute. <laughs> I never, never was. It's fun. I never was a big fan of Chris Tucker until, uh, uh, like, um, Good Lance a couple of years ago. Um, a Silver Linings Playbook. Uh, he was, uh, he was really good in that. But anyway, we're not talking about uh, Chris Tucker. We're talking about Jackie Chan. Um, the first Jackie Chan. M- Movies. I, I guess that he was. He actually was did some bit parts. I think in uh, a couple of uh, Bruce Lee movies, and um, uh, he started making movies in Hong Kong in the late seventies. Uh, Drunken Master. A lot of people really dig that movie. Uh, I think that was his first kind of big, you know, 
big hit. And then he came over here, right, and was in um, the Cannonball Run. The Cannonball. So, so what you? <laughs> I don't think not exactly exemplary of the or didn't exemplify the uh, <laughs> the good work of <laughs> of Jackie Chan. But uh, you remember liking that? Is it? Did you watch? Did you like those movies? Yeah, I was a kid. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm afraid it's one of those. I'm not gonna. I, I remember as a kid going, "Oh, this is great!" You know, car crashes and racing everywhere. Probably not a good idea. To and get I remember liking Jackie Chan's character. I, I don't know if he spoke English at that point. Um, I thought I know. Well, he didn't really have any uh, until the very end, though, right? He didn't. There wasn't much um, martial arts for him to do, right, in the movie until the. Uh, towards the the very end, but he was funny in that movie, mm-hmm. and, and he also about the same time he uh, same time that movie came out, he did a movie called at least at the time it may not be I don't know if this is the original title or not, but called The Big Brawl, and it was directed by the guy Robert Klaus, the guy who directed um, Enter the Dragon, and that, I think that was supposed to be you know that was going to be his big introduction you know into mm. the U S. And that movie just didn't, you know, it wasn't bad by any means, but it just didn't, it didn't have near the appeal that Enter the Dragon did. And that was like a, what are we talking about, early 80s, 80, 81, something like like that. And it wasn't until, uh, what movie uh, broke him uh, over here, finally? Uh, Rumble in the Bronx? Rumble in the Bronx, yeah. That was his first big, I guess, hit over, over here, mm-hmm. theatrically, right? Uh, and that's hard to believe. It was like 94, 95, um, 1994. So it took him a while. to, But he was making some kick-ass movies over in Hong Kong. like um, Literally, because he does his own stunts. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and he's about killed himself. That's another reason to really love Jackie Chan, because it's not like there's no, there's no um, stunt guy for him. He does his own he does his own stuff and he's really, he's hurt himself quite a few times. Yeah. And they, they show those in the outtakes. Right. It, yeah. Instead of, and, and I kind of wonder if he got this from right, cannonball run. Those movies always had the Burt Reynolds movies had the funny outtakes at the right. end during yeah. the credits. I'm wondering if, if Jackie maybe didn't, didn't kind of crib that idea from, uh, from, from that movie. But even in rush hour, they had outtakes. Oh, so I didn't remember. I, I forgot about that. Huh. Oh, but, but yeah, he did like uh, what was he did? a police story, Project A, um, Armor of God. Yeah, he he did uh, he did several really good action flicks uh, over his time. And, you know, actually, one thing, do you remember all of his action scenes, especially early in his career, they were more uh, he choreographed. You know, it wasn't just it was like choreographing a dance. You right. know, I think Buster Keaton. Uh, the comedian Buster Keaton was one of his strong influences, and he set things up, you know, where <laughs> it was just pretty amazing uh, to watch. And he would use so many things, so many um, props, you know, within within the shot mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. to do the fighting. I think I'm going to have to go throw a Jackie Chan. After we're done, I'm going to go watch some of his movies. <laughs> Well, well, wait a minute. Now that I look at the clock here, maybe maybe we just need to go ahead and do that now. Once again, we we uh we're at an hour uh, into the show, and we've still got plenty more to go over. Uh, I'm loving this, man. But I think uh, I think we probably need to uh, need to make a break, and then uh, we'll get back at it next time. Get into the 2000s and see uh, see what's happened this century with action heroes. Uh, Rick, have you got, um, have you got anything else uh, before we get out of here? Hey, Knobsters, what do you think about the action hero list? Think we got it right? Think we missed a few? Think some need to be added? Hit us up on social media. Check out uh, our Twitter account. We're at Film Knobs. You can also look us on Facebook and Pinterest. And you can check out the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. And be sure to check out our YouTube channel. You can find us, of course, at Phil Knobs. That all sounds pretty good to me, Sir Rick. And to all of you heroes out there, until next time, take care.